Our LS motor, it's gonna make us go down the road pretty good. We won't win any drag races, but today we're gonna work on helping it stop. And we're gonna do that with putting disc brakes on the rear of this thing. So let's get started. So we gotta talk about just a few things real quick before the disc brakes. So to get this thing to a six lug, my original plan was to use these two piece adapters where um, this is for the five on five and a half. It would go on there. You of course lock it down with your lug nuts. Then you take this uh, second piece. It's hub centric to there where it locks on there. And then you use uh, these bolts to cinch it down. And then you go from five to six. Well, these are exactly two inches wide. And the issue I had with this, I knew these would be close, but I had to do the measurements by myself. And unfortunately, once these got here, through all the videos you've seen of me mocking up everything on the back, these are what was on here. But I could barely fit a fingertip in here. If I cycled the suspension, because this thing took so much tire, it's rubbing the fender well up in here. <clears throat> and there still wasn't any rotor on there that's gonna push it out. Usually about additional 5 16 of an inch because that's a pretty good uh, estimate of how thick your rotor's gonna be. So I needed to narrow it up some. So at first I took all the stuff off and I put the wheel just up on here to see what it looked like like that. And with the front wheel pushed out so far, um, this looked just extremely goofy with the wheel tucked in I mean there was a good you know couple inches in between there and it just don't look right so I was on the idea of how to get it from uh, this axle pushed out a little bit and a six lug and there's a million ideas you could come up with and I'm not gonna explain all of them and why I didn't like that one but I'm just gonna explain to you what I came up with and what I'm gonna be happy with when I had these axles out, I welded up this hub. I took it to my buddy's house who has a lathe and we turned it down so that this outside adapter, which is three quarters of an inch thick, will pop right on here. So it's hub centric to it, locates it. I then brought it here and uh, drill and tap the axle itself. So these lock this to that. The bolt will come out the back side, probably about a half an inch, which is gonna allow me room to probably put the lock nut back there as well. But additionally, once these are tightened down and you slip your rotor on here, the rotor will cover up the head of these and they'll be locked on with your lug nuts. So these couldn't even back out all the way if they wanted to because there's gonna be a rotor there to prevent that. So with these on here, um, like I said, it gets us three quarters of an inch out. Now, once we slide that rotor on here, that gives us an extra five sixteenths to push the wheels out. So that'll get us from the factory out an inch and a sixteenth, where two inches was too wide. So hopefully an inch and sixteenth is just about right to give us clearance up here and everything. And um, it's just a pretty simple way to do it overall. Now that that thing was six lug, I had to figure out how to put disc brakes on it. Well, before I even ordered those adapters, I had done some research and Rust Stuff Specialties sells a kit for a four nine inch that they said can be made with, to work with the Dana 44 since it's five on five and a half on mine anyways. And they do sell the brackets by themselves, so I just did enough research on their website and figured out uh, which rotor they were using, which calipers they were using with what brackets, and I just bought the brackets and planned on going to O'Reilly's to get the calipers and the rotors. That was gonna, so that kit was gonna be five lug. I was actually planning on putting the rotor on there and then putting that two piece adapter on there to convert it to six lug after. And like I said, those spacers were already too wide, so that idea wasn't gonna work. So I already had these brackets, and I already had the rotor they recommended, which was a 1990 Ford Bronco rotor. And 
when I decided to put the rotor at six lug at that point, um, I started looking up some kits for them and I seen a guy was doing a kit with a rotor from an 88 Chevrolet, uh, basically four wheel drive front rotor. So that's what this is here. Well, once I got one of them, just visually by looking at it and the Bronco rotor, um, they looked really close to each other, like too close to each other. So I looked them up on O'Reilly's website and every measurement on them was within two millimeters of each other. So that's pretty damn close. So I got a set of these. I ordered the calipers that they recommended to work with that Bronco rotor with their brackets. And these are for like 73 to 87, three quarter ton four wheel drive front rotor, I believe. They're a good size rotor and they bolt up to these brackets and these are the brake pads for that. And I have kind of just roughly mocked this stuff up and it appears it's gonna work except for one thing. These brackets don't jog it over far enough and I can take you over here and show you why. So very rough mock up here. Uh, this is just sat up in place. The calipers are bolted to these brackets with the pads in there. And the main issue with these brackets, they kick over but with having that spacer on there, pushing it out, um, they're so close to these studs and these studs drop in from the backside. They have a flat side on them that prevent them from spinning because they hug the axle tube so close and you drop those in from the backside. If I ever have to replace that stud, um, I don't want to have to cut brackets off or try to chase the threads to save it. So I'd rather just modify this bracket get it over the little bit it needs so we can just put these in and out with these full welded up. So I cheated a little bit and I just finished the passenger side so I could show you guys what's actually going on here. Um, but how it was just rough mocked up, I rigged this up with old brake hose to some air fittings and you can hook this up to the air hose and it'll actually squeeze that caliper. So I tightened the rotor down to the axle with the lug nuts and then I mocked that up into place put air on it where it actually grabbed the rotor and it held that bracket in place where I could get a good measurement. And basically what we need to do is offset this bracket and an ad additional three eighths and the two studs that go behind uh, where this bracket is. You will take uh, two half inch nuts here, run them down, them stacked on top of each other, uh, ran all the way down leaves about an eighth inch of thread sticking out. And we're gonna use the belt sander and sand those threads off, get them gone. It still leaves enough threads that when all this is tightened down, they stick out past the lock nut. So the three eighths offset and losing an eighth inch there is enough to be able to get these studs in and out. So the first thing we're gonna do is cut this bracket. I'm basically gonna come in the middle right here between this area. Draw a straight line across there. We're gonna cut it straight across. Since this is 3 8 thick and that's how much we wanna offset it, we're gonna jig it up on the table over there. Just offset 3 8 of an inch. I'm gonna weld it on both sides. And then we'll let this start cooling off. When it's cooling off, we will take our, lug, or our two studs here, run the nuts down on them, uh, sand them down like I said. So let's get working.
but that bracket's still cooling and waiting on it. Um, there's a little bit of prep work we can do. One, uh, my bracket's gonna go on the back side here. So I moved the studs around. That way my two uh, shorter studs are going in here on the back side. Uh, you don't want it on the front side. So make sure you get those in the right spot. And we're gonna clean up this axle by this. Uh, where we're gonna end up welding that bracket on so we need to get it cleaned up. There's one other thing we're gonna do real quick. Doing that other side, I came up with this. You may be able to see there's a couple little tabs, one here, there's one at the bottom and down there underneath the clamp. That's because this bracket's supposed to be for two and three quarter or three inch. If you're doing three inch, you grind those tabs off. If you're doing two and three quarter, you leave those little tabs and you fill the gap. Where this bracket falls on the axle tube on mine is where my axle actually tapers down. I don't know what the outside diameter is right behind the axle flange at the furthest point out, but it tapers down to a two and three quarter. And this is meeting up uh, on that taper down. And it's a size where between the size of it and the fact that the bracket can't get any closer because the caliper would start to rub the inside of the rotor. Um, basically, it's creating a little gap in there. And instead of trying to fill the gap up like they recommend, I came up with this little shape here and I'm building this out of some quarter inch little round rod here and I'm tacking it to the inside of that bracket. That way when I tack it on there, uh, this is a little narrower being quarter inch and round than that 3 8 but it should create a nice little uh, barrier in there to be able to fill against and weld it up. So I'd like to put this in there and do a good pass on each side versus uh, just jumping that gap and filling it up. So here it is, our modified bracket, offset 3 8 of an inch, welded up both sides and uh, kind of tapered down that little spacer in there. Like I said, you can see where it'll allow it to uh, just fill that gap. And I think we'll be able to put one pass on there, weld everything together, both sides. So next we wanna assemble calipers and everything to this right here on the bench and then we'll take it over there to the axle. There we go. Got both our brake pads on there. Our brackets bolted down. Got our little airline on it so next thing we're gonna do is uh take this over there and set it on and put some air to it get it held up in place get our rotor on next we'll take this bad boy and so you know you always want your bleeder up that does matter so I'm just gonna set this on here. We can actually lock it on, and because the vehicle's in neutral, um, we can then rotate this down and get it where we want. But we can't have this sitting on here. Um, our brake pad would rub right there if that was the case. So I'm gonna use a piece of eighth inch filler wire here and set that underneath there, get it set down, put air on it so it clamps, and then we'll rotate it down, index it 
until the bleeder is pretty much straight up and down. And then I'm going to see what we're looking like on the back side. We'll make sure we can get the studs in and out since that was the whole point of this. And if everything looks good, we'll tack it on. So now that has that rotor. I got my gap right there. So those studs will both come out. The top one's very tight, but it was just like that on the other side. The bottom one's easier to get out. And we got our gap set here. This gap right here is why I was saying we don't really, we can't really help how it's, the brackets fitting to the axle because this gap right here is gonna determine how far out or how far in it can go. It really can't go any further in. And like I said, back there it's landing on the tapered part of the axle, which is why we put that filler piece in there. I have this indexed pretty well where I want it. So I'm gonna tack it up. see what we got here I'm gonna pull the caliper off now that it's uh, tacked in place the bracket is we'll have to pull the caliper off then the rotor then I'm gonna pull the adapter off and I'm gonna put the last two nuts on the axle retainer plate and we'll put it all back together So I wanted to show you guys this before I put everything back together because I'm not going to weld this today. I'm actually going to just leave it tacked up. But I know on television they make everything look so damn easy. And I want to show you the reality of custom car building. So even though I modified that, um, I know I told you guys this tapers down. Well where this tapers down right here, hopefully you can see, but there's actually a dip right there. It kind of goes back up and then it finishes tapering down for whatever reason, just how it's built. And my bracket, of course, has to land right in that dip. So even with that filler piece in there, there's a pretty good gap underneath that filler piece, about 3 sixteenths. Um, you can see just from tacking that right there, I mean, I'll be able to fill it up and burn it in. But it just kind of sucks that that happens to fall right in the worst spot possible. Other than that, Everything else looks good. I will be able to weld that up. I'm not too worried about it. I just want to show that to you real quick. So I just realized I got so busy yesterday. My parents stopped by. Um, I never recorded an outro for this video. I got the wheel on and I set everything down and we've accomplished a few things here. So one thing, obviously we're gonna have some good stopping power back here opposed to the drum brakes. No more uh, tire rub in the wheel well, so that's good. And the last thing we accomplished, my front tire is pretty wide to this fender. It's still inside of there, but I mean, that wheel's pushed out pretty far. And I like the way that looks. And I wanted the same for the rear. Well, the two inches look great, but there wasn't enough room. And with that spacer and the rotor, like I said, moving everything out an inch and a sixteenth is just about right to look good, have that wheel pushed out and give us the clearance like we need. Well, that's it for this video today. So I hope that kind of helps someone out in realizing how easy you can put a disc brake kit together. 
in all honesty, it takes more time to do the research for part numbers and whatnot to figure out which calipers and everything you need to go buy from like your O'Reilly's or Napa, then it really does actually put the stuff on. Um, that being the Chevrolet 6 on five and a half, if you guys had an old seed 10 or something, that rotor should work for you. The calipers and with being able to buy those brackets like I use in the other and all the different sizes, um, you should be able to put that on the back of a C10 without even having to step over the brackets because you wouldn't have an adapter plate in there, etc. So what I want to do is all the rotor part numbers, uh, the the rotor, the pads, the calipers, all those part numbers and even the brackets, I'll put them in the description of this video where if someone wants to build their own disc brake kit, I'm sure you could spend the time and research and find out which five lug rotor um, was the same size as that six lug one. And then if you had a five lug, you could do it as well. So, um, like I said, I hope this helps someone out. Up next, we're gonna be putting a sway bar on the back of this, but you're gonna have to come back for a future video to see that, so. Here's what I'm kind of projected for the future. Once the sway bar's on, I'm gonna do it today. Um, all my major mock-ups are done as far as everything I wanna get, get um, on this before I pull it apart. So after this, I'm gonna take it to Randy's house next week and pull the body off the frame and bring the frame back here, box it, weld up tabs, just like our disc brakes we did today, coat the bottom of the travel all with something and we're gonna start to marry them back together and actually start to get this more of a finished product. So I'm getting excited. Please come back to check out those videos. If you're new to the channel, thank you guys for coming and watching. If you always come back, um, I appreciate it guys. If you wanna help me out, all you gotta do is drop a comment down below, like or share the video. All those things help the uh, channel grow. So I always appreciate it when you do that. Make sure to click that subs uh, subscribe button if you haven't yet. If you're on Instagram, I'm on there at Puddin's Fab Shop, and I'll see you guys next time. But don't forget, sitting on your ass won't finish your project. I'll see you guys in the next video.